thank you for seeing uh, through the course of this year uh, an agenda that, that truly is restoring this country. You've spurred an optimism in this country that's setting records. I'm deeply humbled as your vice president to be able to be here. I want to thank you, Mr. President. I want to thank you for uh, speaking on behalf of and fighting every day for the forgotten men and women of America. That was really something to see. And if you can, see the full-length dance mix of that videotape from today. There was nonstop effusive praise from Vice President Mike Pence today just across the table for President Trump in what was likely the last full cabinet meeting of the year. It was so unusual in real time and over the top some folks who saw it then went back and did the math and counted it up. The headline in the Washington Post reads, quote, in cabinet meeting, Pence praises Trump once every 12 seconds for three minutes straight. That's just the beginning of Trump's day of praise. Later in the afternoon, we heard from several members of Congress who fell all over themselves to share their thoughts on the president's success this year. This has been a year of extraordinary accomplishment for the Trump administration. Something this profound could not have been done without exquisite presidential leadership. I would say to the American people, President Trump has been making history since the first day of this administration. President Donald Trump delivered a great victory for the American people. You're living up to every, everything I thought you would. You're one heck of a leader. This is one of the great privileges of my life to stand here on the White House lawn with the president of the United States, who I love and appreciate so much. We would not be standing here today if it wasn't for you. Paul Ryan just said, how good was that? It's <laughs> Joining us to talk about what we've just witnessed, Vivian Salama, NBC News national political reporter. Also back with us, Jonathan Lemire of the AP. Well, Vivian, you have um, you've worked around the world. You have covered uh, actual despots. You've uh, in the Middle East, uh, but not to limit yourself to that one region. What did you make of what you saw and heard today, having covered the Trump White House? Well, there have definitely been several moments, uh, uh, like with the wow factor in, in 2017. There is def this was definitely one of them. Um, perhaps when uh, Vice President Mike Pence uh, began with his speech in the cabinet meeting, but then, of course, Secretary Ben Carson uh, was asked to, to uh, conclude the introduction of the meeting with a prayer that also uh, thanked the president for his leadership and his efforts to uh, basically give uh, tax cuts to American people and help them live better lives. And so that sort of began uh, this very unusual day, even for 2017. Of course, we saw something very similar in June, where a cabinet meeting began and President Trump asked all the secretary, cabinet secretaries to go around and say a few words, and every single one of them sort of unleashed this, um, this wave of praise on him. But look at the alternative. I mean, we know what happens when President, when someone falls out of President Trump's good grace, he goes after them on Twitter, he criticizes them very publicly. And so I think a lot of these people, whether it is anyone, uh, members of Congress or uh, people in his own cabinet, obviously want to avoid that kind of public um, interaction with him. They want to kind of stay in his good grace. Um, you also have, obviously, in past presidencies, you're going to have some level of compliments and praise on a day with a major legislative victory. And so we were seeing that it was a bit extreme today, for sure. Um, but um, definitely everybody just trying to kind of keep in his good grace and see where the, how, how far they can take this, this victory. Vivian Salama, who I don't praise often enough, same is true of you, Jonathan Lemire. Um, everyone who spoke at the White House today, not to inject something as cynical as politics into this, are they all prepared to see um, videotape of what they said today in a campaign ad against them in 2018 or 2020? At least this time, the Republicans waited to actually have the bill passed and signed, ready True. to be signed, before having their White House victory celebration. Spiking the ball. Uh, in May, of course, they, when, the health care, when the House passed the Health Care Act, they were out there, and that bill died in the Senate a few months later. Um, yes, that is the danger here. You know, the, the White House needed a win. 
the Republicans who control both houses of Congress needed a win. Now they're saddled, perhaps, with this win, which polls very poorly. It's Americans, the great majority of Americans think that this is not a good bill. The great majority of Americans think it helps the rich, it helps other people, not us. Uh, this is something that the Democrats will take. They will take the sound bites from that uh, ceremony, perhaps from that cabinet meeting with this effusive praise of the president and they will be in every battleground state every competitive house or senate race next year if the if this tax bill m remains unpopular perhaps if, especially if the economy starts to slow down and this becomes yet another issue uh, they can hit the, the president and then by extension the other republicans with Vivian, this is what I've never understood. If we're all in on it, um, the notion that Fox and Friends broadcasts sometimes to one viewer who then comments about that segment and carries on his own bilateral conversation, the notion that everyone who spoke today did it for one person, what's the impact of that? Does it make the republic any better if we all know and can see and can listen to what's going on? Well, of course not. And obviously, the American people are capable of assessing the situation and kind of, uh, you know, as John was saying, if they find that this bill doesn't deliver the goods, ultimately, they are going to be able to make that assessment. And we're going into a midterm election year. And so, obviously, um, all of those results will trickle out in, uh, you know, in the polls at some point. Uh, however, uh, I, I think that at this point, a lot of these lawmakers are just trying um, to you know, basically give themselves a win. This is not just a win for President Trump. They obviously wanted to kind of um, lavish him with that praise, and he tends to thrive in those environments. But they also find that this was a win for them. And so I think that they're going to want to carry this out and take this um, to their own constituents and say, we did this for you. And so I think that that's a big part of what we saw today as well. Jonathan, it also occurs to me the one thing missing at the White House today, questions about Russia. And so <laughs> with that as the standard, they're coming off a good day. That's true. Uh, it's also missing questions at all. It's traditional for presidents oh, yeah. to have an end-of-the-year news conference before they depart for their Christmas vacation. Uh, perhaps the schedule will change, uh, but there is not one listed for tomorrow. There is not one that we are aware of on Friday, which is the day the president, for now, is slated to depart uh, for Mar-a-Lago. Um, but yes, absolutely. This is a day that the White House is thrilled about, that mm -hmm. they are they have been touting nonstop. They feel like they have delivered this uh, for the American people. And, and look, there is, of course, the possibility that they will be right, that the polling will reverse, that, that Americans will find this extra money in their paycheck and be thrilled. But right now, that's not where this is. This is a politically dangerous tax cut. As hard as even though that seems like an odd yeah. phrase, uh, but right now it appears to be. Maybe the Republicans can sell it better going forward, um, but that is something they're going to have to prove they can do. But at the moment, absolutely right. For a White House that hasn't had all that many good days in this first year in office, uh, today is one they're going to circle on the calendar. And 